buy-in, which was Markish one. Floppe beat out his opponent, who also he also had a buy-in, Julianne. Marvelous Marco versus Floppe. Marvelous Marco comes from World Eight, the LA region of SoCal, which is really hard to call it a sub-region here for us because there's not enough locals. And the one local they do, well, tend to have two. The two locals they do have happens to be World Eight, which is unsanctioned. Because they uh, here in Soka, if you guys are wondering, we, shank, we sanction our tournaments using Smash.gg. If your tournament is in Smash.gg and does meet the quota of entrance, it'll become sanctioned. But World 8 falls out under the being unsanctioned because they use Challenge mm -hmm. in a different format. So that's World 8. Floppe, he's been also around for a while. But Marvelous Marco has been causing a bit of a tear at World 8 here. But he also goes to other tournaments and does particularly well. So Marvelous Marco has kind of been... Um, a small up-and-comer alongside players like Kairos, uh, Sugar, and a couple other players who come out to Anwar, who's made a return to the Smash scene. Uh, he's picking up Wardo and, I believe, Snake. He was from the Brawl scene back in the day. Yeah. I say in SoCal, um, there's a very large number of people in the high mid-range. So that's uh, so what I'm saying is, that, like, right before PR. So, like, you can, you can take wins off PR, but probably not consistent enough to be doing that every single tournament. So they can they can make or break someone's bracket run, but they're not necessarily gonna like win the whole tournament, you know. Yeah. So it will be nice to see some of uh, SoCal's uh, different talent here. Uh, sometimes, in, to me, like two mid-level players is much more exciting than two top players. That is true. That is. <laughs> that's that's just for me. <laughs> it is true. Marvelous Marco does go two link. So yeah. this is kind of a character we don't really see much representation here in SoCal in general. Yeah. Right? Uh, I did see that we have Boat. So I don't know if Boat from Vegas is here or if she had dropped out. From the tournament yet, I did see the fact that Caius is here also from Vegas, so they happen to be the two Vegas players that we do see here. So, uh oh, someone's got a drift on their controller. They oh, better, no. uh, they better check that. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. That? I, I, I wonder if I wonder if they noticed it. Yeah, I hope they do, man. <laughs> I oh. hope they do. I don't want them walking. <laughs> I'll, I'll the, oh, that's what it is, man. Somebody did not. So I think I have my there's Joy a, Con, a so I can I can go up there and like disconnect it for them if they want. Or it's 2019. Champ, champ's it's, it's 2019, guys. You disconnect your controller like you would disconnect the PS4 controller, like you would disconnect your your Xbox One controller. You disconnect them like that, man. It's not that hard. Hey, man, if you guys check out my Twitter at uh, twittercom slash Sedgehog, then uh, you can see my a pinned video, tweet. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a video of how to disconnect pro controllers every single time, so you're not the bane of every TO's existence. I'm not trying to. You know, get these controllers banned or anything, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> you use the controller yourself too, so you yeah, definitely exactly. know the proper procedure. And mm -hmm. looks like they did follow you on Twitter because yeah. they are chemistry. <laughs> they know exactly how to do it. Even though if the because you have to take out the switch from the dock, but the locks that everyone has, mm -hmm. um, it has just enough room. Or if you pull it out just a little bit, then you can do it. Yeah, so. the, w the wiggle room is nice enough to pull it out. You're right. Yeah, it's not like if the switch is inside the dock at all, then it'll always connect to the TV. There's like. A very small window where it can actually connect yeah. properly. But it looks like we are good. We got our names in. Looks like the controller's gone, and we're good to go. And one thing you, people players can also do is always press the minus button if it's like another controller like that. Sometimes pressing the minus button might actually work much faster than you know doing that whole procedure. But whoa, 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 whoa! Floppy plays Brown Plant. That's that's. A, I thought he played Cheek. I think he. I saw him play Puff once. <laughs> okay, maybe he's <laughs> so. maybe he's a character crisis kind of dude. Okay, Plant Gang. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> Man, that, play, that that gang died the minute the game came out. <laughs> I'm gonna be totally honest. This is my first Piranha Plant match I've ever commentated. That sounds like it would be a bad thing, but like, come on, how many people actually play Piranha Plant here? That is true. Um, I will tell you one thing. I have played games with uh, HLB, who's also ranked here in SoCal. He's picked up the character here and there before. I can tell you, you have to re kind of respect Patui. The reason why that the actual spike ball will fall down even if you hit Piranha Plant, so it mm -hmm. won't disappear, and it does a lot of damage. Okay, we're already kind of seeing problems with Piranha Plant. The range, not exactly the best. Okay, yes, he has that, that, that down B, but it kind of takes forever to load. So, right now, Marvelous Marcos oh. is doing a good job with his range of his projectiles, keeping him at bay, not letting him set up with Patui or anything else, and almost got the bomb set up to, into the kill, but not quite yet. Yeah, he tried, to, he tried to psych him out there with that opportunity. The one thing that Piranha Plant lacks is speed, which is one thing that Toon Link is able to make up for, not only being a solid zoner, but having great speed. Between all the three links, Toon Link seems to have a little bit of the best balance between both worlds, right? Good speed, good kill power versus, you know, Young Link who has all the speed, sometimes lacks kill power, and Link has the kill power but lacks the speed. Okay, that was a beautiful roll read there. Used the boomerang to elicit a reaction out of him because he knew that he's been getting him every time, so he's going to try to get defensive with it and just able to come in with an up smash, charge it up, and continue and get the kill off of it. Oh, he kind of has to watch out whenever Plant is inside the pot. He does kind of receive armor there, so you have to respect that. Mm-hmm. 
But then on the flip side, once he's out, then his entire head is a hurt box as well. So <laughs> he's kind of just extended his hurt box across the entire stage. Yeah. But yeah, already, I mean, I mean, I want to believe in Patui. I know I've seen it done well, but a lot of the times it just feels like it just falls flat, like literally falls flat. It'll yeah. go absolutely nowhere. It's not great for setups. You got to be in the air. You got to put yourself in a like already bad position to be able to use it properly. But there we go at the ledge. Got a little bit of control with the poison fog. I do like the way that Marco's using Boomerang. He tosses it at different angles to make sure that if Floppy is going to go for an aerial, he has to worry about getting hit for Boomerang. This is conditioning Floppy to kind of play a little bit of a more ground game and not go for aerial conversions or things like cross-ups. What a good way to use that jab reset. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I told about that armor. <laughs> I told you about that armor. Yeah, okay, maybe he didn't know about it because, again, how many plant mains do you know? But the important part is going to see, is he going to continue to not respect it? Yeah. Or if he's just going to adapt and learn from it. Because that's a big part. Even if you don't know a matchup, you can still learn a lot from the first game. Yeah. Even, even the first game, sometimes the first stock, you know, the interaction that you get depending on how often your opponent uses it. Oh, he tried to go for a landing there. there. Would have been a great option to keep flopping Wow, away. he actually parried all of the poison fogs. That's crazy. All right, let's see how he gets in. Keeping himself at bay with Patui. Respects it this time around. I like it. Marco knows the six-second timer that bomb does have, so he knows how long can hold Ooh. up holding the shield, man. That'll cause the shield break and the dancing with the stars moment. He'll definitely send you off the stage for that one. Yeah, a little bit too much shield pressure there. That Patui actually working out very nicely, but just like that, the boomerang going to pop him back up, going to get a four smashed out of that. We're going down to an even game. Last stock here on the first game here, folks. Yeah. Marco knows he has to keep it even. He doesn't want to get upset at himself. He, he feels like this might be an upset, honestly. <laughs> He has seen Floppe at a couple MSMs, so Mark, they, but I don't know if they have played at all. Yeah, I mean, Floppe has some good wins, too. I think both of these players have good wins. I remember yeah. Floppe beating Konkon once. Uh, so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential for both of these two. Oh, but all of a sudden, Marvel is Marco going in with the landing aerials, getting these great conversions. Jab reset, though, into the down smash, breakdowns on him. Nice, He's able Marco. To get around Poison Fog. Marco's taking his time to come back on the stage. I talk about how that boomerang pays a lot of dividends. It does cost Floppy to play the ground game and into Marco's hands, into that forwarder at the ledge. He tossed it upwards because he was saying, if you're going to try to escape from this advantage, there is something that I'm covering it with. And I get to confirm right off the bat, too. Yeah, definitely very good display from Marvelous Marco, especially at the end. He noticed that Floppe, every single time he was near the stage of the corner, not enough to be launched out. He would always Patui to try and cover himself, but there is startup on that. So yeah. just immediate runoff fair before you get in position to use it, and now it's just sealed lights off for Floppe there on game one. Yeah, he had such a reliance on Batui, and that was kind of the problem that Floppe had. When he started to go for the opportunity where he went for inside the pot, that was really good because he kind of stopped Marco from going for an aerial, especially off stage. That would have been a much better play in that situation, right? But like I said, Marco kind of knows how to handle his opponents at disadvantage using Boomerang, using Arrow. It was a really good opportunity. A great tactic for Marco. Yeah. Let's see if Lave is going to stick with the prior plan or maybe if he thinks that another character will work, work out better for him. We'll have to see. Yeah. I want to give a quick shout out to World 8. Uh, they are the tournament that sponsors Marco. Kairos and Asuga, all perspectively, they are a great <coughs> video game store. If you guys haven't checked them out, they're located here in the heart of Los Angeles around Koreatown. Definitely check them out. It's World 8 LA. They host tournaments every Thursday. So if you're worried about, you know, getting your losses on Smash GG, don't worry. Hit the World 8. They'll take <laughs> care of you two ways, in the video game front and in the actual bracket. And shout out to them because they are they have great customer service. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I like about World 8. But let's get into this game, man. Hopefully Marco will get Floppy some of that great customer service World 8 has. Yep. Already Jab sets up in the tech chase situation. He's been missing those techs every time, so he's got to be careful soon. All right, yep. Uses Patui again to defend himself from the ledge. But Marco kind of taking a different attack approach this time. He, before he was zoning out with his projectiles. Now he's kind of going in aggressive. Maybe he thinks that he's got Floppy a little bit on the ropes here. Gonna roll right into that though. Okay, a lot of big damage for him. Yeah, Patui just trying to keep him at bay. If he can navigate around it, but looks like yeah, Floppe is just taking his time. He's got a very slight percent lead, but not anymore. Yeah, having having the final destination to have the rest of the stage and no platforms, it's a really good opportunity for Floppe. But it also allows Marvel's one to have that space to kind of run around and control. He makes sure he's not gonna give Patui too much of a respect. But like I said, the hit will still come down and it's gonna add up just like so. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I like what he was doing because uh, before on the other stage on uh, Kalos, I believe they had a lot of room to mm -hmm. um, a lot of room to throw out the projectiles. Now that we're on a slightly smaller stage, like Marvelous mm -hmm. Marco has changed up his playstyle so that he can counteract the, the the counter pick as well. Exactly, nice. He kind of runs out that little bit of the range. That was a bit of a miscall for Floppe, but I felt like he was waiting for Marco to come in with an aerial. 
Yeah, he's trying to find a jump read there, but he's going to be able to get that grab into a jab reset. No, not jab reset. Into a jab. <laughs> Continues on to the combo. Nice. Good use into down tilt. That percent definitely going to allow uh, Marco to put him off the stage here. He's got Fluffy a little bit on the edge. He's still able to recover the last hit of the up B. Keeps him off the stage. I like that Marco keeps going low because he knows Floppy is forced to go in that direction. Oh, I okay, like it. There Turn we go. For stage bike. Mm -hmm. Went uh, closer to the stage that time around, so he was not able to get hit by the spin attack. Looked like Marvelous Marco was content to try and continue doing that. The situation that I would have loved to have seen play a little bit differently here is if Marco went for the bomb throw uh, Z drop. Oh, <laughs> again, the same mistake. He had against, but there's some good advantage for Floppy because he knows he's been going for me off stage. If I can stall myself with a move like so, have armor and punish him for it, this will definitely pay out pretty well for me. Mm -hmm. All right, Floppy trying to bring this back around, maybe try and get something going. Oh, but I don't know what it is. Floppy just cannot hit these techs. Yeah, he's he's missing them, dude. He, he gets like one them. in every eight or something like that. And for a character like Toon Link that may have trouble killing every now and then, giving he's him a jab reset is critical for him. Yeah. It, it's possible. So we saw him get two techs here at the situation where he's finally running. Okay, I have to tech now. Mm -hmm. I have to. Yep. I'm getting jab reset. But you always have. You, oh, Marco! <laughs> Marco, please. Hey, man. Oh, man. It's not over. <laughs> it's not over, man. Put some respect to the man's name. He called you out of stage a couple seconds ago. Yeah, you know, for some reason, I felt like, you know what? He might actually try and do it. And he did. And I don't want that to bite him in the butt later. And he might. Like, yeah, but he let himself get hit by poison fog. And now all of a sudden, he's at 79. Floppe's got a second wind here. Now he's going for the bomb down. Uh, he's throwing the bomb downwards off the stage, which is really good, which I wanted to see the edge guard play out the last one. He stops him before he gets the armor in the pot. He's looking for the conversion, but he sees the fact that Floppe felt he was content to land safely on the stage. Oh, there's another downward yep, bomb. I like it. Oh, set up into a fair? No, not quite. He's going to make it back to the stage. Oh, oh that could have been a get up attack, but he I doesn't go for it. Nice. Good call out. Good call out. He let Floppe feel like he was safe, and he counts him on nicely. Floppe sweating at the opportunity and disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, that's another disadvantage of Piranha Plant.